Hey, hey, welcome to Laker Nation, and we are in seventh grade art, and today we are going to learn how to paint lips in oil pastel. We have already done that, so we are on part two. If you're in Europe, it would be like this. We are on part two. We are going to learn to put some value around the lips and eventually create something that will hopefully look like this. Yeah, woohoo! All right, so here we go. Um, got my new handy tool. I got my lips, and my lips are ready to go. Now, a couple things we're going to do is just go over real quick. Uh, with the lips, we used red, orange, and we used uh, green, gray. And we may have to come back to those. We're going to use some white. Uh, we're going to use some peach or what people call uh, light orange. Um, pale orange would be the other term for it. We're also going to use some uh, pale blue, and we'll probably throw in um, some of the dark blue, ultramarine. So, um, and there might be a spot that we add a little bit of brown. All right, so you're going to need paper towel. You might need your brush if you have it. If you have some device for scraping off the excess um, oil pastel, that would be great. You're going to need a pencil. Now, with my pencil, I'm going to draw some lines. Um, I'm going to try to draw them as light as I can. I'm going to shoot for an aim point of a spot right about here that I marked with my oil pastel right there. So right there. I'm going to go from this corner, and I'm going to draw a line that's light that goes to there. And I'm going to draw a line that's light that goes to here. Now. Once I get those in, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit. Now you can see them a little better. I'm gonna pick a spot about right here and I'm gonna draw a half circle. It can't be wider than the Cupid's arch and uh, I need to be careful of that so that um, it doesn't get too big on me. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go this direction and I'm gonna draw my nostril like we did with our nose drawing from before. Draw my nostril, that's the inside. Then I'm gonna draw the outside right there and the outside right there. Now, with our uh, nose, we're gonna get two lines, one that comes from here and it follows the angle of my, and I'm gonna make it into a little triangle space. That is gonna be where I'm gonna put my laugh line. I'm gonna put my laugh line on this side as well. All right, now, one last spot. Um, so what we've done is the lips go around the sk skull like this. Um, but right here where I've drawn in pencil, we get a natural uh, separation between the cheek and the fleshy part of the lip. And that is called the laugh line. And then down here, we're actually gonna get a line that forms because of this little indent in the bone. As these two bones come together to form a uh, suture and it's a piece of cartilage in most cases that attach them so if you find a skull like of a dog or a cow or something you'll find that the jawbone is in two parts so the mandible comes sometimes comes apart now because of that there's going to be a line that's underneath that's going to go like this and then i'm just going to draw a little bit and that's going to be a shaded area now i'm going to pick my sunshine to be coming from this side so um, when I'm looking at it, it's going to be from that side. All right. So we are going to begin. And I think I have um, it all ready. All right. So what I'm going to start with is I'm going to put my first shadow in. Oh, before I do that, I'm going to take my kneadable eraser and I'm going to roll it out like this. And then I'm just going to lightly go over my pencil lines. And what they're going to do is it'll take some of the the graphite right off and this is a cool little trick that i learned on youtube myself um thank god for youtube some art teachers just never give it to you man um so i'm gonna just it takes off the excess it'll line up on there all right so i'm gonna take my light blue and i'm gonna start because the light's coming this way my snot splitter is gonna be in shadow on this side so i'm gonna draw lines that are contour and they follow the nose. 
because the nose knows. <laughs> so just to give you an idea of how all the shading of this goes, this is what we're doing right here on the snot splitter. So I'm gonna take my orange, my light orange, make sure it's clean, brush it off, and then I'm gonna take and I'm gonna add some orange to that. I'm gonna cross hatch it so that it goes across just like that. And I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna put this in double. So I want plenty of orange. Notice I went over a little bit so that I get a little bit of uh, orange going over there. And remember, we're using blue, the complement. It is a complementary color. We're using blue because it provides the shadow. In reality, black is the absence of color. Uh, white um, is all colors combined in reality and science. So um, we don't use black necessarily to do our shading, to keep it warm and look like it's real we use the complement to gray out and lower the intensity of the color. And you get a really nice kind of grayish brown. Notice I'm putting white on this side of the snot splitter. And then I'm gonna bring my orange and I'm gonna add my orange and I'm going over some of that area that I shaded. And I'm just putting orange, this pale orange up and almost to that. So I get a nice layer of orange on there. It should be nice and thick. Now I'm gonna take my paper towel and I'm going to do something that I call scumbling. Um, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to start in the light. And I'm going to rub down all my excess oil pastel. And I'm going to start pulling it into the dark. And this is a way of blending. If I was painting an oil painting or an acrylic painting, I'd be doing this with a brush. And I'd be pulling it with a clean brush in. So this is a skill that can transfer to other materials, uh, acrylic and oil specifically, maybe even a little bit of gouache, but not so much watercolor. Watercolor, you don't blend like this. But so look at that. Hey, there we go. We have the first, woo, and I knew have my new camera mount, so it mounts differently. Um, I'm going to do the rest the same way. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to add some blue in the shadow area of the nose all the way down. Follow that down. This side's in shadow. This side's going to get orange. Notice I didn't press hard there. I uh, put a light value of blue down. I'll come back and add some more blue. Now I'm going to put my orange down. I'm not pressing harder with my orange. I'm just, just rubbing a little quicker. Now I'm gonna take this blue and I'm gonna put it on this side of my snot splitter and I'm gonna bring it down a little bit over here and I should get a nice shadow. Yeah, look at that. Put a little more orange in there. Oh yeah, now I'm gonna scumble that like this. I'm gonna start over here because I don't wanna wrinkle my paper I'm gonna be careful how I push over there. Mostly gonna to push towards the edge of the paper. And I come this way. And by scumbling like this with our oil pastel, what we're doing is, is we're rubbing that extra oil pastel into itself and into the paper. And then you can keep adding layers and building up layers. If you don't do this, your, um, your oil pastel will build up and it, depending on the quality of your oil pastel, you'll get a waxy buildup and you won't be able to add any more. So I'm just making sure that I can add more because as with all painting and oil, an oil or acrylic, we are going to, you know, we're gonna to continue to rework things. We might make a mistake here or there and we gotta fix those mistakes. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so now this is where I take my ultramarine blue and I'm going to bring that in and I'm going to put that right in that nostril, inside that nostril. Yeah. And then I'm going to go over that with some orange. Notice it kind of scumbles it right in. Now I'm going to take the brown, add that in. I could maybe go a little more blue on top of that. 
and a little bit more orange on top of that and I get a really nice shadow. Oh yeah, look at that. Now I'm gonna scumble that bad boy. And I get a nice dark surface. All right, so now I've got a really nice, um, I'm gonna scrape off some of that chunky stuff so it doesn't bleed and get into my other areas. Yep, all right. Now I can take my brush, brush away any that's extra. Essentially, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do this in the same in the dark here. We're going to do this along here. We're going to add some dark underneath the chin. Okay, so my laugh line is going to get emphasized. And this is the wrinkle of your laugh line. So I'm going to put that color in. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to make a contour line that kind of follows the shape of my cheek as it comes down. Now, because my cheek is there and I get a wrinkle here, I'm going to add a little bit of blue, this darker ultramarine blue right along there, and make that a little darker. Then I'm going to bring in some of my orange, and I'm going to follow that. Oh, yeah, look at that. Now we're going to scumble that again. Now remember, at any time, if you feel that I'm going too fast for you, you can hit pause. I recommend watching the video once, seeing how everything was done, and then coming back and doing that. Now, I've made a hard line there. I don't necessarily want a hard line, so I'm just going to go with... Notice how I go towards my light? And I start pulling it in a little bit and then it fuzzes that out a little bit and that makes that dark. Now I'm going to put some, the cheek itself on this side is in shadow. So I'm going to make sure that I get some orange that goes over that. And I lost some of my contour line there. So I'm going to bring that back with my orange and I might come back and add that in as I go about that later. It's fun to see how I did this live with my seventh grade students just a bit ago. And now when I do it, I do it just slightly different each time. I never do it the same way, but I do it a similar way. So it, I try to follow the same pattern that I was before. Now, one of the things I recommend um, is that you always have some tape. You take your tape. Um, you're going to put your tape on it like this. I recommend that you... Hang this up on the wall. And I know this camera is not going to be able to see it that well because it's going to be far away. But I'm going to hold the camera and I'm going to look at that from a distance. What I'm trying to do is just change my perspective on how I look at this. Normally, when I work on this, I am like this close to it. And so my vision of what I'm looking at is that from that perspective. When I take a step back from it, and I look at it from a distance and I see it from a different perspective, I get a new idea. I get a new thought process on what it could be. And, and this is an important lesson in art. It's an important life lesson as well. You know, if you're having an argument with your mom or your dad and they don't necessarily see your point of view, sometimes it's important that you take a step back and just try to think of it from their point of view. They may have a whole different set of eyes or reasons for what they're doing and it causes us uh, some you know to to see it from their point of view so it's you know this is a life lesson in the sense that in art we take a look at our work differently to get a different view on it to have somebody else look at it and then tell us what they think and it gives us perspective and allows us to make changes or to grow that's probably the biggest thing so notice I just put in, I put my orange in first this time, and then I brought in my blue, and I shadowed up my nose. Now, look at that. Nice. All right. Now, I'm going to keep working this, and we'll come back to it. Um, I'll show it to you in spots. I'm going to do this side now, and I'm going to work this side. I'm going to add a little white right in here, and then I'm going to add some more orange. I don't want this video to get too long. 
But at the same time, I want you to be able to see the steps that I do and how I go about doing this. Notice I follow the shape of my nose so that I those lines will affect how you look at it and how somebody else looks at it. And I try to eliminate my hard lines because we don't really have hard lines on our face. All right. Now, I'm going to add a little blue in here. This one's going to be dark. Put my orange over that. I'm going to bring some brown in. Scumble that. All right. So my orange underneath is going to get a little there. And then because this is in the light, it's going to get some orange right there. Get some orange right there. Now, this whole part is going to get white from... From underneath there, I'm going to put white underneath my nostril. It's going to go all the way across right here. Because that's all going to be in light. So is not that part, but this part right around. Um, notice because I'm on the edge, I have to draw my lines a certain way. Now I'm going to take the orange, the pale orange, and I'm going to go across this. And where it mixes in with the white. Oh, and I had some blue in there, but that's okay. I can fix that. I can take my scraping tool. And I can scrape some of that out. Because I have more than one layer there. I can make sure that this is clean. And I'm going to put some white down again. Lighten that up. Come back with my orange. Oh, yeah. Nice. I'm going to put some orange up here. It's going to get lighter in there. I'm going to add some white. Now, how do I know where to put these colors? Well, part of it's because I've observed a lot, and I've observed uh, people's faces. I pay attention to how the light hits it. So I start to see those things. Um, the more you look at art and the more you look at people when you're working on drawing them and that type of thing, the more you'll start to see these things. Now I'm going to scumble this in. Scumble that right up to that layer so I kind of lose that hard edge, but not really. I'm going to add some shadow in there so that'll be okay. Oh, look at that. Yeah, you get a really nice separation between those. You get some light there. I'm going to go here. Scumble that in. It's okay if I go over my sun because I'm going to turn that into a dimple or a birthmark. Or a beauty mark, as they like to say. Um, so now I'm going to add some blue right in my laugh line. I'm going to cover that with some orange. And then remember, there's going to be, there should be a little shadow right down here. There should be a little shadow that goes up here. And then this should be a contour, and it gets a little bit. I'm going to go over that with some orange to darken that up. I'm going to take my paper towel. I scumble that in. Get rid of my hard edge. There you go. Look at that. Looks like I need to add some uh, red right in here. My lips need a little color right in there and right in there to make that work out just right. I'm going to add a little white across the top of that. Some of those things start to show up as you work it. All right. So now I'm just going to put a little blue right on the bottom of that. I'm going to put some brown on it. Come across it with some orange. And now I got a mole. <laughs> Look at that. Woo! All right. So now I'm going to, um, there's going to be a little bit of a shadow from this nostril. 
it's going to come down, go to here, it's going to go here, and then it's going to come across over here. So I'm going to add that in, add my orange, it's going to cross, it goes over the edge a little bit so that I get a little bit of a softer edge. Take my, and then scumble that in, and that'll be just a little reflection or a little shadow off of the bottom of the nose that goes down over your upper lip. Yeah, all right, we are almost done. So now I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna take my light blue and I'm gonna just lightly put a coat of light blue right around here. Now, I'm also gonna add some light blue over here and then I'm just gonna extend this and give it some light blue that goes down this way and follows that arch that way. And then this is gonna come just a little bit up here now, I'm going to cover that with some orange. Oh, I should have made sure that was clean first. And if it's not, that's okay. I want the orange to rub right up against the lips. That's okay if they go over the lips a little bit. And then I'm going to extend this this way. And that'll all get scumbled. Now, I'm gonna scumble this first before I add in the darker blue. So we're gonna go get a nice layer of blue going here. Rub it right up next to the lips. And if you rub it just right, it'll give a soft edge. And we go this way. We go this way. I'm going to do it again. Today is the last class. This is the last section of drawing students that I have for the 2019-2020 year. It's been an exciting year with this group of seventh graders. Um, the first group did really well. The second group is doing excellent. Uh, there are a few that could get their stuff in. I would really appreciate it if they did. All right. Now, I'm going to add just a little bit of the darker blue right along the lips. I don't want it to be, I'm going to make it go out a little bit, and then some go down here, follow the chin, come over here. And it looks weird when you see it like that. It looks like, why did he do that? Well, we've got to scumble it. We've got to put this in. Um, you can fix everything that we do. Remember, I could take some of this blue off if I didn't like it by just pulling with a scraper. You can use a butter knife. You could use a spoon for that scraper. Um, you can use a paper clip. Those are all just things that... Uh, are available to you. Now, you can still see some of those because it's lines. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my, and I'm going to scumble this and pull those blues together and rub them. And I don't want to press super hard and I want to go in a circle because that'll pull some of the pastel color across each other. There's a guy that I watched paint the other day that says you should do a series of X's like this. And you could do that instead of the little circles. Um, with a paintbrush, it's a lot easier with the X's than it is with the oil pastels, probably. Now, if you had Senelier, really nice oil pastels, or you had Sakura, um, the version that's up from these, you can really get some nice textures and values, too. Now, I'm going to add some orange right in here. Darken my orange a little there. Darken my orange right across here to give it a little more orange. I'm going to put some orange in here. Now I could scumble that just lightly so that it's not so harsh, but that gives it a little bit more color. Yeah. All right. Now this whole area is going to get white. This area is in light. So I'm going to put a layer of white down. I'm going to get some white to about right here, and then it's going to start to get dark on this side right here. So I put my blue in, probably bring some more of that. Uh, I might even just make my a little line of blue right there. 
Now I'm going to put some orange over all of this. Now before I go back and I go over the orange here, I'm going to wipe off any blue that's on there. See, and there I got a little bit, so now I can scrape that off. Look at that. I'm going to put some white right where it should be highlight. There might be some white running right along here. Now I'm going to take me a new paper towel, double it up, and I start by scumbling. Rubbing that orange into that blue. Now as I get towards the edge of the page, notice I'm pulling towards the edge so that I don't wrinkle my paper. I'm going to do the same over here. And look at that. I've got one thing left to do. I could go over here and scumble that a little bit so I don't get those lines. But now I take and I put my John Henry right there. Or my, um, not my John Henry, but my uh, John Hancock. And would you look at that. This was how to paint lips in oil pastel. Part deuce if you're in Europe, and um, we have made lips galore. So you could attach them to your nose <laughs> that we did before um, and make a really surreal kind of montage. But great job today, seventh grade. Super proud of you.